Right, hi guys, welcome back again. Um, we going to do Unit 7E. Our theme for today is Profiles. And let's start off with Unit 7E, 7F. All right, there we go. Looking at Unit 7F, our topic for today is History. So let's go back into a little bit of history and see how did times change from things way back then up until now. All right, Unit 7F, if you have your books, you can open and follow me. All right, in our picture, I usually ask you what you see. We have four pictures. Number one, we see an old lady, which looks like uh, the queen. Picture number one. Number two, we have a guy, and we see that he looks like he's climbing down a chimney. Number three, we see a girl and a boy, and it seems as if they are working and doing the washing. And here, it seems as if we are having a boy, and he's pulling rocks, black rocks, and it seems or looks like coal. So, in history, our topic for today, we have these four pictures and we will find out what these four pictures mean and what they represent. Okay, let's look at example number one. Pictures in the text show English children in Victorian times. What do you think about, I think their lives were like? Now, judging from the pictures, this boy is doing some hard labor and by labor I mean some hard work we are looking at Victorian times so this all that this means is um, the time that Queen Victoria reigned and that was late early 1800s to the 1900s so those were the Victorian times now let's go on to our lesson and let's see what the lesson is all about Okay, so what do you think their lives were like? Okay, I think they work hard and their lives were difficult. Now, in the picture, we see that they do very hard work. It seems as if they are not enjoying it. And if we go on to our next slide, I'm going to play the audio and then we can all follow. And then afterwards, we can talk about the... Victorian times. So first, let's listen. Children in Victorian times. Victoria was Queen of Great Britain from 1837 to 1901. During early Victorian times, poor children worked from the age of five to feed themselves and their families. These jobs weren't easy and were often dangerous too. Many children worked as chimney sweepers because they were small and thin. This was very unsafe as they climbed up narrow chimneys to clean them. Homeless children or orphans usually did this job. A lot of children also worked in cotton factories. When the cotton threads broke, children went into the machines to fix them. This was very dangerous. Other children worked in coal mines. They pushed coal trucks or they opened and closed doors to let air through tunnels. The masters were often cruel. Children worked long hours for very low wages under unhealthy conditions. A lot of children had health problems and accidents. Lord Shaftesbury helped to stop adults from using young children at work. He started free schools for poor children. By the end of Victorian times, all children went to school until the age of 12. Alright, 
<laughs> that's all from the audio I want you guys to look at the picture and then I want you to ask yourself do you think you would have loved the fact that you were born in the Victorian times and those were the times of the Queen of the Great Britain from 1837 to 1901 judging from what we have read now we see that these kids were used from a very young age to do very laborious work work that were supposed to be uh, done by people that were much older but these kids at a very young age learned to work in cotton factories they worked in mines they worked in factories as well in coal mines so these were the harsh circumstances that these kids had to work under now if we go to our next page there's a lot of information if we go on to our next page we can see uh, some of the words in bold which I will explain to you now um, word number one is narrow if you look at picture number one we see a guy that's climbing down a chimney now this was some of the work that these kids had to do they worked as chimney sweepers and when they talk about narrow passages um, this was very unsafe as they climbed up narrow passages when we talk about narrow passages these passages were not that wide for them to work in so they were cleaning and doing all of these under very harsh circumstances so narrow passages um, were one of the conditions that they were exposed to right the second word that we were looking at is threads okay a lot of children also worked in cotton factories okay when the cotton threads broke so what is a thread you guys are familiar with needles and threads if you look at your clothes they were stitched with a machine so what is a thread a thread is just a piece of cotton that you put through the needle that is a thread if you look at the clothes that you are wearing at the bottom of your t-shirt or at the bottom of your skirts you'll notice it's stitched now it has been stitched with thread okay right next we look at the example push i don't think i need to explain that but what i am going to explain to you is you guys do know what a wheelbarrow is and that is something that you put in some of your bricks and you push that now in the olden days they used coal trucks all right next word tunnels i don't think i need to explain to you what a tunnel is you guys are quite familiar with the kuchi tunnels these are narrow tunnels that they had to work in um, looking for coal coal were used to as a form of helping to keep with uh, the electricity in those times um, if we look at the next word masters um, masters were almost like the employers if i can put it to you in more simpler terms the masters were the people that looked after them they paid them a wage at the end of the day those that did not um, get paid a lot of money the masters were supposed to look after them but these masters were often cruel so another word for masters in those times would have been your employers right okay so the next word wages right you all are familiar with wages and this is the money that you get after you have worked the next one is conditions and they talk about the conditions let me give you an example um, a condition in a coal mine what do you think happens in a coal mine it's dirty it's moist it is um, very claustrophobic these are the conditions that these children have to work under okay if you look at the chimney for example they were very very dirty and very narrow so these people or these kids had to climb up these chimneys and clean it and these were the conditions they were subjected to right and that's the last word that we are looking at okay moving on 
Okay, check the words or phrases in the word list. Use them to make sentences about children in Victorian times. Now, I want you to look at some of the words and I'll play the audio for you. Small boys often worked as chimney sweepers in Victoria. Many children worked in coal mines in Victoria. Victorian homeless children or orphan children who worked in coal mines in Victorian times pushed. Many Victorian employers were cruel masters. Many Victorian children worked in cotton factory. Lord Shaftesbury started free schools right. for poor children. Now I want you to make your own sentences. I will give you the examples. I want you to pause the video and practice. Uh, for example, number one, chimney sweepers. The kids usually had to clean the chimneys in the olden times. Coal mines. You guys are familiar with coal mines where we extract coal and we use them um, as a form of to make electricity possible. Orphans. These are usually kids that had to grow up without parents. Coal trucks. This was a method that they used to transport the coal from one location to the next. Cruel masters. Right, these were masters that were not very kind. Cotton factories. I explained to you the cotton factories were where they made the clothes. And free schools. Well, you guys know the meaning of free schools. So what are we supposed to do? Use these words to make sentences. If we look at the first one, chimney sweepers. Okay, if you make a sentence, small boys often work as chimney sweepers in Victorian times. Now, once again, you can make your own sentences with these words. Next one, coal mine. Many children worked in coal mines in Victorian times. Once again, you can use these to make your own sentences. The next one, orphans. Victorian homeless children or orphans were often chimney sweepers. All right, and the next one, children who worked in coal mines in Victorian times pushed coal trucks. Once again, you can use these to form your own words. Okay, next one, cruel masters. Many Victorian employers were cruel masters. All right, and the next one, many Victorian children worked in cotton factories. We can also say many of these children, if we look at cotton factories we can say they were exposed to harsh conditions in cotton factories and the last one free schools once again make your own um, sentences and form your own dialogues if you can but here's an example Lord Shaftesbury started free schools for poor children all right this is just an example of a sentence you can make your own sentences as well all right, moving on. Okay, read the theory. Now, this is the theory. Find examples in the text. Forming opposites adjectives, we use un, il, dis to form opposite adjectives. For example, if we look at the word able, okay, we're forming opposite adjectives and we say unable and not disable All right so if we need to find words in the text I think there's only one two yes okay first word unsafe we don't say ill safe or dis safe and the opposite of unsafe is safe now does it look very safe for this guy to walk down this chimney and I would say no the next word unhealthy and what's the opposite of unhealthy and that would be healthy okay so children work long hours for very low wages under unhealthy conditions and the opposite of unhealthy is healthy All right okay now form opposite adjectives from the adjectives below 
check in your dictionaries if you guys have dictionaries open okay what do you think is the opposite of honest I'll give you a clue and it starts with a D dishonest right if you look at word number two pleased means that you are acceptable or you accept something you are pleased with it and the opposite is displeased when you are not pleased with something all right logical what's the opposite of logical and we see that the answer ill logical all right we have a word attractive what's the opposite of the word attractive and that is unattractive we do not say disattractive or ill attractive but we use the word unattractive All right and certain what's the opposite of the word certain for example you are certain that you passed your exams and what's the opposite of certain and that is uncertain all right moving on okay now we use them in sentences of your own now once again you can phone one of your friends on Zalo or zoom or even to whatsapp and you can practice with them okay now the first word just honest if we had to make a sentence don't trust him he's a very dishonest person all right we don't want any dishonest friends amongst us all right so our first word my dad was displeased, displeased when i broke his watch and if we look how can we make a sentence of the word displeased we can say my dad was displeased when i broke his watch all right let's look at the next word illogical i'll play it most of his arguments we were illogical of the word illogical we can say most of his arguments were illogical okay and all that that means is it did not make logical sense all right unattractive her smile was very you unattractive until she got her teeth whitened attractive her smile was very unattractive until she got her teeth whitened. Alright, and we go to the next one, uncertain. I am uncertain about what I want to do when I finish school. Right, and we can say I am uncertain about what I want to do when I finish school. Meaning that you are not sure what you want to do. Right, if we go on to the next one okay now word power is our title for this page when we talk about word power we talk about the ways and the means that we can use one word that has different contexts now in Vietnam you are familiar with this concept because one word can have different meanings um, provided that you use the correct characters in Vietnam and you guys are quite familiar with that um, for example break okay to break we say to disobey the rule or the law for example in Vietnam you need to have a license to drive a car and if you don't have a license you are disobeying or you are breaking the law Okay, right. He slipped and broke the vase. An example, he slipped and broke the vase. Okay, going on to our next one. To break, separate into pieces. How can we use the word break in this context? It means to break a glass that has shattered into different pieces. So here you can see how this word can be used in different forms okay next one I never break a promise not do what promised for example you promise someone to give them something now you do not fulfill this promise so you broke that promise ok 
Okay, and the next one. We usually break for lunch at one o'clock. All right, to break means to stop for lunch. How we can use this in this context? So as we can see that the word break can be used in different contexts. Okay, same word, different context. Right, let's go on. Okay, tell your partner the two things that surprise you the most in the text. Once again, what can we do? Find someone at home or call one of your friends and practice. This is what I want you to think about. Should children work? Why or why not? Okay, I think children shouldn't work because a child's life should be stress free. I believe that their parents or guardians should be responsible for providing for them. Now these were orphans and because they were orphans, obviously they did not have parents. So the guardians in the Victorian times took advantage of this and made them do some hard labor. Okay, now this is just a short video that we can watch before we go on to our next slide. Children in Victorian times. Victoria was Queen of Great Britain from 1837 to 1901. During early Victorian times, poor children worked from the age of five. This was to help feed themselves and their families. These jobs weren't easy and were often dangerous too. Many children worked as chimney sweeps because they were small and thin. This job was very unsafe as they had to climb up narrow chimneys to clean them. Children who lived on the streets or who had no parents usually did this job. A lot of children worked in cotton factories. When the cotton broke, children went into the machines to fix them. This was very dangerous. Other children worked in coal mines. They pushed coal trucks through tunnels. It was hard work in the dark. The masters the children worked for were often cruel. Children worked long hours for very low wages. A lot of the children had health problems and accidents. Eventually, Lord Shaftesbury helped to stop adults using young children at work. He started free schools for poor children. By the end of Victorian times, all children went to school until the age of 12. Luckily, now children in Great Britain get education for longer and don't need to work. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You can play it again and pause the video and just go back. Just some questions on the video at hand. Alright, these are just a couple of questions. During Victorian times, all children had to work to help their family. Do you think that is true or false? Well, that's false. All children did not have to work to help their family because as the text has said that these were some some of the children that had no guardians and they were that had no parents and they were orphans all right number two chimney sweepers were often children who didn't have parents was that true or false if that was true okay children working in coal mines had to repair machines was that true or false it was false Children's masters didn't give them much money for their work. That was true. Lord Shaftesbury helped to stop children from having work. Was that true or false? That's true. Children were getting a better education by the end of Victorian times. Do you think that was true? Right because thanks to Lord Shaftesbury, which made it possible for children to earn a better wage. All right, let's go on to our next slide. And that's the end of our slide. Right, imagine you are a 15-year-old Victorian boy. Describe a typical day to your partner. Write a short paragraph about it. Obviously, we cannot do this here and now. 
If you want to, you can practice with your friend at home or via Zoom call. Alright, that's all for the lesson. Let's go on to our workbook. Alright, let's go on. Open your workbooks on Unit 7F. Let's look at vocabulary. Complete the sentences with the correct words. Now, number one, here we see a boy, and this is quite familiar in the text. Children in Victoria, Victorian times work as, and here's a clue to help us with the answer. Number one, chimney sweepers. Once again, pause the video and do this by yourselves first, and then you can check the answers. I will put the answers up at the end of the lesson so that you can check your answers. Right, all they worked in. What does this look like? There's a clue factories. Alright, if we move on, other children worked in, and there's our clue. What does this look like? A mine, but that's just one of the words coal mines. Right here we have an old stopwatch. They worked long and here's a clue. Hours. For low. What does this look like? Money. But in those times when you pay someone uh, for doing a job, we call it wages. Alright, and the last one we see a boy looking like he trips on a rock. They often had health problems or, and there's your clue, accidents, that's the answer. Right, number two, tick and check the correct box to form opposites of the adjectives. Right, we have three examples, un, ill and dis. These are the three examples that we can use. For example, number one. Um, healthy, do we say unhealthy, unhealthy, or dishealthy? And the correct answer is unhealthy. Number two, certain. Once again, we've already done this, so this is just revision. We do say that it is uncertain. Okay, logical. We've done this before. The correct answer is number two, illogical. Okay, attractive, what do we say? Unattractive, ill-attractive, disattractive. And the answer is unattractive. Number four, pleased. And the correct answer is displeased. Happy, I'll give you a chance. And the correct answer is unhappy. Honest. And the correct answer is dishonest. Advantage. And the correct answer is disadvantage. Alright, moving on to number three. Find the words to match the meanings and solve the crossword puzzle. Alright, so let's see. Number one, we have the word very unkind. If we look at our text... What's similar or the cinema for very synonym for very unkind? We can say that it is cruel. Okay, so the money that workers get paid each week, we call it wages. Right, the opposite of wide, and that would be narrow. Long passages in mountains or underground. And we call those number four tunnels. All right. Number five children who don't have parents. Those are referred to as orphans. Okay, they make thread with this material and Number six, there's our clue, and that is cotton. Number seven, places under the ground where we get coal from. We usually get coal from the mines or coal mines. And number eight, our last one, poor children in Victorian times worked for these people. Can you remember? Nowadays we call them employers, 
in the olden days we call them masters or they used to call them masters all right for the dictation i will play the dictation for you and you first listen and fill in remember i will give the answer at the end but practice your skill and do not just wait for the answer all right okay and i'll play the audio unit 7f dictation Exercise 4, page 56. Most people in the world have one ambition in common. They all dream about having a better life. Some want to become rich and famous. Others want a successful career, a family, or a big house. It doesn't matter where you start out in life because you never know where it will take you. Some of the most famous people today had boring jobs before they became famous, but then Everything changed overnight. Listen and write. Most people in the world have one ambition in common. They all dream about having a better life. Some want to become rich. and famous. Others want a successful career. A family or a big house. It doesn't matter where you start out in life. Because you never know where it will take you. Some of the most famous people today had boring jobs before they became famous. But then everything changed overnight. Listen and check. Most people in the world have one ambition in common. They all dream about having a better life. Some want to become rich and famous. Others want a successful career, a family, or a big house. It doesn't matter where you start out in life because you never know where it will take you. Some of the most famous people today had boring jobs before they became famous. But then, everything changed overnight. 
All right, that was quite a long audio. Okay, now I will reveal to you the answers for... All right, and this is the answer. Once again, I would encourage you to do this beforehand. Um, I would encourage you to do the exercises on your own first before you do the exercises and just copy and paste them. This will only help you at the end of the day um, to sharpen your skills. But from me, that's all and goodbye.